Today we are going to look at variegated embroidery threads, what they are and how to use them. Hi everyone, Sarah here from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery. Welcome to this video all about um, the beautiful variegated threads. I know they can be a little bit confusing now and often people don't know what they can use them for. So we're going to have an in-depth look at them today. I'm going to show you the different kinds that there are. We're going to look at how you can use them, some do's and some don'ts. And then I'm going to show you some pieces of my collection, which I've used them um, to see how you can use them in your projects. So just before we get going, it's time to say thank you very much to all of those of you who have clicked the super thanks button this week. There's lots and lots of you and a lot of you that I'm going to read out today have done that more than once several times. So thank you very much, guys. So thank you to Margaret, Elizabeth, Tinica, Jamie, Angie, Anna, Carmela, Sonia, Robin, Kimberly, Cynthia, Diane, Chantal and Elaine. Uh, thank you so much guys, it's much appreciated. I'm glad you're enjoying the videos and if you're enjoying the videos too and you'd like to show your appreciation and give support to this channel so we can keep on making them, you can click the super thanks button below this video. So what is a variegated thread? So basically it's a thread that changes colour when you pull it from the skein. So in one length of it and it changes colour several, several times within the same skein. But there's lots of different kinds of variegated threads. So I'm going to pull out a few and show you the different kinds. So hopefully you'll be able to understand a little bit more what it is you're looking at. So the first one we are going to look at is variegated thread. Um, they're all varying colour, but they're not all variegated threads, if you know what I mean. So variegated threads are actually colours. I've got a couple here that um, change colour throughout, but they are the same colour. So they change tone in colour. So they're either all blue and they go to a very pale blue or they're all green and they go to a very pale green. So there's no other colours in there. It's just one colour that changes um, how dark or light it is throughout the skein. And if I just pull a little one out here, I've got this one. So I've got a couple. These are the anchor ones and these are the DMC ones. That's the anchor and DMC version. The same thing there. So they vary a little bit. But if I pull this one out, you'll see what it is. Now, the changes in colour are quite long on this one. Some of them have got short. We'll look at those in a second. So it starts pale green, quite a lot of pale green. And then it slowly goes to mid green, gets a little bit darker, a little bit darker still and then goes to dark green. You can see how much thread I'm pulling out here. And then it starts to go back to light again and back to light. So that's quite a long, <laughs> it's quite a long thread with a knot in the end now. So they stay the same color, um, but they change in the lightness or darkness. So that's a variegated thread. So the next one I'm gonna show you is a multicolor thread. So this one is like a variegated thread, but it has more colours in it. So these are the anchor ones and they actually say multicolour on them. I don't have a DMC version of this, but we've got lots of other DMC ones to look at in a second. So you can see that they're still the same sorts of colours. They're yellow, but this one's kind of got yellow, orange and a little bit of kind of a brown in it. Um, this one, if I just compare it to the first one so you can see all the shades of blue in there this has got shades of blue but it's also got this little bit of pink in it as well so it's basically another color in there and they can um, have up to six different colors in them there's a, a green and a yellow it's got a bit of blue in it so there's quite a few colors in that one and then this one which is wrapped around a bit of wood and I don't have the, <laughs> the number for this one I'm afraid but that one's got lots of beautiful colors in it you can see that one and if I just pull that one out You've got pink and yellow and green and blue and purple and back to pink. And that goes throughout. So that one's got lots of different colours in them. So that one is a multicolour. So up to six different colours in the same skein. So this one is a DMC thread and this one is called DMC variations. So the clue is in the name there. It varies a little bit. So these ones have different um different colours, but they're the same colour family. Now, so let's get this green one here. So sort of greens and that pale green and a bit of yellow and a bit of um, turquoisey color. This one is uh, mainly all pinks here. This one's nearly all oranges. So these ones are a lot more subtle. So if you just want some subtle changes in your embroideries, um, the variations are really good. They come in beautiful, beautiful colors, um, but they are the same family and they're much more subtle. So that's the thing to remember with these ones. And then I'll just show you a little bit of what that looks like out of the skein. So this is the um, variations 4215. And the colours are a much quicker change than they are 
in the variegated one that we looked at at the very beginning. So it just starts as blue, purple. <laughs> Ginger cat's off. He says, I've had enough of... Go on. <laughs> Go on, <laughs> Cute. Wobbles the table when he gets off. So he's gone. He's not very interested, but that's fine. I hope you I hope you are. So we've got some blues, some purples, a little bit of pink back to blue, back to pink, back to purple. So the changes are a lot faster in this one, but they are quite subtle. So these are really beautiful threads to use. So if you want something with a little bit more of an impact, you want um, different changes, this is the DMC Colorist range. And these have four complementary colours in the same skein. So when I say complementary, they're opposite. So they're going to be quite strong colours now. Um, lots of really interesting ones and these can um, scare people a little bit because the colours are, um, they do change quite drastically. So look we've got blue and red and there's like a pale blue and a dark, a dark blue in there as well. So they change quite a lot. This one's like a little candy, <laughs> little candy stripe. So green, um, green and red complementary colours on the colour wheel. Um, so you can see how how different these ones are and how much they change. That one's beautiful. I'll show you something stitched in that one later. Um, so really strong colours and really strong changes because they've got the four colours in the skein. And if I just pull one of those out, let's do this one. This is the 4511. So it's going orange to green to yellow, back to orange, back to green, back to yellow. So lots of strong changes in that and what you can do with these and I think you can do it with the anchor ones as well is these colours are actual colours from the um, the single colour range of the DMC so you should be able to pick another four colours that are these colours that are in this skein and you can do your project with those if you wanted mainly to do um, those colours and then just wanted a little bit of the variegated threads in there you could use this with it. So I think that's quite clever. I'll just demonstrate. This is the DMC colour card. And if I just pick that red colour, if I go there, that one matches the 350 colour exactly. So you can pick the four colours out, you can mix them in the variegated and you've got a nice colour palette to use. So you can start to see now the different types of threads and how they do actually vary. I'm calling them all variegated threads because the colours vary in the thread, but within that there are these different sections and there's lots of other people that make them as well. So I'm going to go through a few of them. These are just ones I happen to have my collection. There are others, I'm sure you've got some um, that you like to use. So these are the Madeira ones. These are really beautiful colours. So I would call these the... Um, the multicoloured ones because they're both the sort of same family but this one's got yellow pink and orange in it doesn't matter too much about what the name is just sort of understand what's going on in the thread and there's a nice one that's got yellow green and orange in it so that's a Madeira one this is a DMC one again but this is a perle thread so you can get different kinds of threads as well we'll look at some of those in a second too and this one is just a variegated range so it's pink and it just goes dark pink medium pink and light pink in there so you can get those different threads we've got some silks a lot of your friends in america will recognize these ones these are northern light silks and these have got some beautiful subtle color changes in them this beautiful pale pink one precious pink this one is um got a little bit of sort of creamy yellow color in it really lovely you've got some nice darker ones there with some more oranges and purpley colors and a blue range as well so we've got silks those are very beautiful no particular order. This is cottage garden threads. Some of you might recognise these. These are hand dyed ones. And what happens with hand dyed ones, these are often called over dyed threads. You might hear that term used. And I looked this up and did a bit of research and I couldn't necessarily find a, an ultimate definition for over dyed. People tend to use it when things have been hand dyed because maybe they're not as regular as machine done ones like the DMC and the anchor range. Um, so they might vary a little bit. Um, throughout the skein but they're very beautiful ones and look at the colours in that some purples and some greens in there um, really lovely colours this is a necessities ink one floss over dyed so they're actually calling this one over dyed and over dyed can also mean the skein starts as one colour and then you dye it with another colour so it doesn't start white and you dye the different sections it starts as a 
is a pale cream and then you add something and then those colours mix. So sometimes over dye can mean that as well. And they're actually calling this one over dye, but this has got some really stunning colours in it as well to use. So that's a Necessities ink one. We've got some chenilles as well. This is a Steph Francis and this is an Oliver Twists one. And you can see, let me just show you this one. So this I would call the variegated. It's shades of the pink. And then this one is the multicolour. So it's the shades of pink and it's got another colour in it as well. So it's got purple in it. And these are really beautiful. And you can see how these change. These are hand dyed as well. So they might vary a little bit. Really beautiful. So that's a chenille. Um, what else have we got? This is another Oliver Twists one hand dyed in the UK. This one is quite interesting because this one is really subtle and the changes are very slight. So sort of brownie green, kind of earthy colours. I'd have to unwrap it to see what the change in colour is and how often it changed, but really nice and subtle that one. It's a different kind of thread that looks like a pearl thread as well. So you can get very subtle ones. This one is a gumnut yarns. One again, very subtle, just shades of the same ones. And what often happens is when you hand dye things, you get these natural changes anyway. So they're not specifically variegated threads. It's the way it's been dyed, but you do get the colour changes within the thread. So I'm including them in here. And there's another one here that I have got from the Mulberry dyer. These are amazing hand dyed um, threads from natural substances. And if I just natural dye stuff and I just pull that off, let's go to the other end, you can see those sort of natural colours that come out depending on how long you leave it in the dye stuff. If you leave it in the dye stuff with the dye stuff and that touches a thread, that can make it stronger. So you can get some really beautiful effects and you can make your own as well if you want to. So those are hand dyed ones, really nice and subtle. This one I found in my stash. <laughs> Think of beauty. It's um, imitation silk embroidery thread so it's rayon basically um, and you can just see um, the colours in that one just yellow to a very pale sort of peachy colour and back to yellow again so just the two colours in that don't know what it looks like when you pull it out it looks like the changes are fairly frequent it's very beautiful it's very hard to stitch with, <laughs> stitch with um, but then um, just two colour changes in that so that's an imitation silk and then I've just got one of these. We looked at this in our video about weird and wonderful threads. We had a look at some really um, different things you could stitch with. And this one came up. So this is seagrass. This is 100% cotton. But again, it comes in various shades of purple. So this is a variegated. It's just changing the colours throughout. So there are lots and lots of different kinds available. You will know more depending on what country you're watching from. But hopefully now you know a little bit what to look for and what the difference is between the threads. OK, so the biggest question with variegated threads is probably when can you use them? <laughs> they look very pretty and you think they're lovely, but how do you actually use them in their embroidery? And I will admit now I was never a fan of these. It's sort of come to them quite recently, really. And I think because basically you don't have much control over them. And I was doing work um, with my training, with the projects I was doing that I wanted control over the threads. I wanted to choose where the colours went. And you can't really do that with variegated thread. So if you're willing to let go of the control, then these threads are wonderful. And I love using them now. I'm using them more and more and I've bought more and more of them to use. So it is all about control. If you want to control where the colours go, use um, the single colour threads. If you're prepared for that little bit of excitement, that little bit of, oh, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen, um, use the variegated threads. So I'm going to show you a few stitches and what they look like now so that you can see how you can actually use them. So I'm just going to start with um, a little bit of stitching, just a row stitching so you can see what the thread does and talk about a few do's and don'ts. So I'm going to use the DMC colorist one. I'm going to use the 4506 because there's lots of nice changes in that. And hopefully you can see it really clearly on the camera. So if I just pull out a length. Now the first thing to note is when you start and stop your thread and when you cut it. So if you want to change your thread, you really want to change it on the same color. Otherwise, you're going to stitch. You're going to stop on a yellow colour. You cut another self, uh, another piece of thread, self another piece of thread. You start on the blue colour and you get this really um, big jump in it. So I suggest when you pull it, you look for the colour. So it starts with green. I'm going to look for the next green, which is here. And I'm going to cut halfway through the green. 
So then if I want to start again with another thread, I am starting with the same colour and then it's not so obvious. And that handling, which I think they know about when they dye these threads, is about the right, right length of thread, fingertips the inside of your elbow. Now I'm going to use all six strands for a moment and I'll talk about stranding it in a second. And I'm just going to show you a stem stitch so you can see how this colour stitches up. So I'm going to just cross over. So I'm going to stitch in a straight line. So what should happen is we get the same colours that we would get in the length of the thread, but just a shorter distance. Three, some counting. I'm only doing this on aid of fabric, by the way, because I want to show you some cross stitch in a minute. But this is this will, you know, it's not just for cross stitch; it's for any any kind of stitching. So we started with the green, and we're already going into the blue. And the bigger stitch you use, the quicker the colour changes. So we'll look at that in a second as well. So we've got a bit of blue here. I'm just going to stitch this a little bit more and then we'll have a look at the colours. So just in a little bit of it here so you can see how the colour changes and it looks much more subtle when you actually stitch with it. And if I put the thread up with it, so we started with a little bit of green on the end and then it went into the blue. A tiny bit of green where the blue goes into the yellow, then the yellow then back into the blue. So you can see by stitching with it, it shortens those changes in colour. So that is something to think about. You look at it in the skein, but when you actually stitch with it, it's going to look a little bit different as well. So I just want to talk um, if you want to strand your cotton. So talk about if you want to strand it. So I just used six for that. So cut it through the green. There's a bit more green. Let's cut it there. So if you didn't want to use the six strands and you want to pull out couple of strands so we'll do that now so I separate them just pull them out one at a time let's pull out half of them so there's three So what you need to do if you want to strand them, if you're doing um, a needlepoint technique and you want to strand your thread so that they spread out a little bit more and fill the stitch out a little bit more, what you need to do is put them back together the same way. <laughs> so make sure when you put them back together, they're going in the same direction. You pull them out the skein with so they match. If I turn it the other way, so that's the way it came out. If I turn it the other way, then you put them back together. The colours mix because you've turned the thread around. So that is a different effect. You might like that effect. You might want to use that. But if you are you don't want to use that, just make sure you keep them the same way round so that they don't do this weird candy stripe mixing in the thread. So that is something just to think about. And the other thing to think about as well is, just thread this needle up, is you need to thread it so you're using that whole length of thread and you're not folding it over on itself. So if you think I'll have three and I'll double it because I want six and you pull it through the needle like so. And that's happened to match quite nicely. But if I do that, we've got a slightly longer thread and you double it in the needle because you want twice as many strands, you again get that candy stripe effect happening, which you might like but um, you might not like. So if you want to have some control over that, make sure you just put six strands in the needle rather than three strands and double it over to make six. That makes sense because you'll get these candy stripe effects. So that is just something to think about. So let's have a look at a few different stitches and how they work out. So I'm just going to do a little bit of satin stitch because I want you to see what it looks like as a block of colour. And I'm going to use the same colour thread so you can compare. So let's just go over three. And the, as I said before, the bigger the stitch you use, the faster the colour changes will come about. It might seem obvious, but if you want it to match something you've done, if I wanted it to match that um, row of stem stitch I've done above, it's not going to because the colours are going to change faster. And I have already mentioned about um, 
making sure you start with the same colour. So this thread up here finishes with the green. So I would make sure I want to start with the green if I'm attaching it. So the same goes for this as well. This is started with blue. So if I want to cut another colour, I need to make sure I start with blue. But you can see now how quickly that's changing. That's gone to the blue to the yellow very quickly. So now you are going to get quite a stripy effect with your thread. So it's going to look more like it does on the skein now. And that you get these stripes. So that's quite a strong colour change. And then we're going back into the blue. So you can see these different colours coming out in blocks of colour. Let me just fix that. That's the end of my thread. You can see these quick changes now we get these blocks of colour. This is the thread that's got um, the four complementary colours in it, um, so the four strong colours, but if you use something like the DMC variations this would come out a lot more subtly. If I used that one obviously the changes aren't going to be so much, so it will change uh, look depending on which stitch you do. And I want to talk about cross stitch as well. Um, this is often used in cross stitch, this kind of thread, but there are a couple of things you really need to know about that too. So I'm going to demonstrate this in a different colour just because. So this is the 4509. I've got some beautiful colours in it. So it starts with a pink. So let's cut it through this pink, through the middle there. So if I want to change, it will be the same colour. Now, some people who do cross stitch, depending on your design and what colour you're using, will work your cross stitch. So put that knot in the top. In row so you'll go one way with one stitch and you'll come back the other way with the other stitch so i'm going to do this big now normally you wouldn't do cross stitch over this many holes but i want you to be able to see what i'm doing quite clearly so you would go that way first you would do all the stitches that go that way and then come across the other way now you can probably already anticipate what's going to happen with that Let's do it until that colour changes. Let's do one more. So you would go across the row with your colour and then you would come back the other way and you can see immediately what's happening with that. When I come back, it's gone yellow all that way and I come back and now it's gone pink. So you've got a yellow stitch underneath and a pink stitch on top. Which again could be a nice effect if you want that effect. But if you're aware of it, then you can at least choose whether you want that or not. So you've got that pink one on top. So it will show up the way you stitched it a little bit more. And it does a slightly, again, weird candy stripe thing. It's quite interesting, but that may not be what you want. So let's just show you that I'm doing it the other way. So cut through the pink, cut through the pink. So I would suggest if you want to do cross stitch with these threads, that you stitch the whole cross stitch first. So you put that stitch in and then you go back and finish the cross. You make the whole cross stitches because then you get the same colour cross stitch. What will happen is the same with the satin stitch, you'll then get blocks of colour appearing in it. So again, a very different effect. So if you want a bit more of a mixed, and I will talk about that in uh, near the end when I show you some pieces, because there's another thing that you can do with that but you can see it changing a bit more subtly actually that's gone into yellow into the pink which is quite nice and now we've got a block of pink so you do get the blocks of color if you do it this way but if you go back and forth you'll get them mixed in the actual stitch so it just depends what effect you want but if you're aware of it you can at least make that decision and again if you use the threads that aren't uh, so bold in the changes of color this will be a lot more subtle so that will make a difference as well so let's just put one more in because we're starting now to go into that kind of greeny grey colour the changes are quite nice actually I mean doing this quite large as well you wouldn't normally do cross stitch this size but I just want you to be able to see it so again you, you um, won't get such big blocks of colour remember I said the larger the stitch the quicker the colour change so if we can get one more out of that just so we've got of each. 
so it's almost like you've stitched it with three actual different colours but it's in the same thread so that is just something to be wary of with cross stitches but how you actually make your stitch will look different in this thread so a question I come across quite a lot is can you use variegated threads for doing shading with so silk shading long and short stitch so I thought I would show you that so you can see what it looks like so this is my silk shaded pansy so we have videos on this if you want to know how to do silk shading um, this is the pansy I did in that video and this has been done in the traditional way I'll point with this you can see so I have chosen these colors I've chosen where the colors go so I've got the yellow here and the light orange color here and I've made the decisions about where that orange comes in as I go around the petals and I can have more yellow on top because that's a bit brighter as I go around it can get a bit darker you can see that with the purple here as well so it's lighter over here and dark around here and I've got darker as I've gone into the middle so I'm making all of those decisions I'm changing the threads as I go and changing the colours as I go depending on what colour I want so that means there's a lot of needles on the go so what happens if I use a variegated thread so if we have a look at this one here I have tried it with this and this is the anchor multicolour so remember that's um, got that extra colour in it so it's a colour range of yellows but with another colour in it it's 1305 if you want the colour number and I picked this one because I thought it's very similar to the colours I've used in the petal so we should get the same effect and this is what it looks like here so you can see that it does look quite nice actually it's not really not really offensive or anything like that but it is getting a little bit muddy and I think it's because of that third colour that's come in there is a kind of a sort of I don't know how to describe it it's sort of almost dirty yellow color really and it's muddying the colors a little bit and it's quite a nice effect but I haven't got any choice about where these lighter colors come where this lighter um, yellow color comes um, it's just appearing where it's appearing and as I do my rows and I come down they're mixing together and they're muddying a little bit so it looks quite nice but it doesn't look the same as this I haven't got that choice over the colors but what I do think this might be good for is if you were practicing long and short stitch and changing colour at the same time might be a bit um, confusing so you can practice the stitch you can practice the rows you can practice the angles as well and then you could add in because now what I would need to do if I went a bit further um, and I want to now go to a dark orange as it comes into the centre and that very white bright bit I would have to go back to my single colours and do that I couldn't pick a variegated thread that would do that job so I would need to do that at some point and I'm just looking at the purples now um, because you would to get this effect I've used the multicolour um, or the variegated so the ones without the big changes in them because obviously if I did that in the purple and I've just got this DMC colorist one and this necessities over dyed and obviously you can see immediately what would happen with this they've got really big changes um, of tone in them so how dark or light the colour is and the different colours as well and I'm just not going to get that effect so if you were going to use it you would need to use the variations or the multicolour I think to get any kind of effect but eventually you would need to bring in the dark colours to have that um, greater control over it so you can decide whether you think that works or not I think that looks quite nice but you don't have the control with it so um, maybe good for beginners um, maybe that's another video in there somewhere I'll have a little think about that but just to see um, the difference between the two and what you can do with it so we've had a look at some of the technical um, aspects of using variegated threads so I've pulled some pieces from my collection and I just want to run through those quite quickly to show you how I have used it in my projects and maybe that will give you some inspiration for you uh, to use it in yours. So the first piece I want to show you is a piece by DMC designed to use um, with these variegated threads as it happens and we did a video on this this was our mindful embroidery kit video and these are the colours that are in it so is that one there that one up there and that one down there and also the matching colour so you remember I said at the beginning that these colours are actual colours from the DMC range so this stem here and these little ones in the middle are all that darker colour there so this is what I mentioned about mixing these colours you can have your palette of single colours and you can use your variegated with it so that's for the stem and then it's this colour around the top and you see how beautifully this stitches looks really strong and stripy in the skein and then when you actually stitch with it you get something a little bit more subtle and it came out really nice and it's just using the effect of this thread to create the design you haven't got to think about changing colours so I would say probably great for beginners you just have an outline stitch and just stitch with this and enjoy the stitching process and see what comes out and um, that one's that colour around the top there and that beautiful reds and greens and pinks 
well, browns, reds, browns and pinks have um, I've done around there and then mixed the stems with that one. So you can see the difference if you choose the colour for the middle or if you just let it do its own thing um, and you don't have that control over it. So relinquish the control with these threads and have fun with them and see what they can do. So this is along the same theme. So this is just a dragonfly pattern. This is on a face cloth because I was trying out the magic paper, which we've done a video on that as well, if you're interested in that. And I've used the three colours for this. So this was the um, the variations range. <laughs> I don't remember what they're all called. So this was a variation range, a bit more subtle. So that one is for the body. That one is for the outer wings and then that colour inside. And you can just see how nicely all those colours work together. You just get this beautiful design all, all on its own. It's like magic. Um, so they really good for outline designs and you want something very pretty and you're happy to let the threads choose the colours for you. So this is one that I have designed myself. I've done this fairly recently. I haven't shown anybody this yet, so you're the first people to see this. Um, just a little mandala design that I did and I've used the threads for this as well. So every bit of stitching in here is done in these vari variegated threads. So I've got this one on the outside here. So this is like turquoise and the blue one here. And I've just let the colours come where the colours have come. I've not tried to make them the same for each of the petal shapes. I think when you try and do that, then you run into trouble. Just let the thread do what the thread wants to do. Let, let it do its thing. And here's the paler one around the outside, a bit of yellow and the green again. And then I've brought the colours from the threads into the beads and into the sequins. So I've used that colour palette throughout and that just ties everything together. So even though this is a little bit random, everything is tied together with the colour palette. So you can just make really beautiful designs by bringing other elements in in the same colours. So this is um, a piece I did to show some different techniques that you could do lettering and I've used those variegated threads in here. So I've used one in the letter P, so the outline. So the back stitch, this is a woven back stitch. So the actual back stitch part is done in a variegated green. So it's all greens, but it's changing from dark green to light green. So it's light around the top and dark underneath. I don't think I planned that particularly, but it's quite nice for the darks underneath because you get that sort of shadow effect of the light on top and the dark underneath. But I just stitched with it. I just, again, let it do its thing. And then I've woven it with just a single colour but you could weave it with another variegated thread and you'll get something else interesting happen. And then if we jump over to the A and the French knots as well, these are great in variegated threads. We haven't looked at any French knots, but they are really great because they just do really random things and you're packing them really tightly and you're making a nice, beautiful effect and they work really well in the variegated. So French knots, definitely. This is quite a different technique we've got now and this is the needle lace. So we did a couple of videos on needle lace and you can see these three teddy bears here trying out some different stitches but I've used these threads as well. So the one in the middle is just a plain thread, just a single colour thread and then you can see these two on the outside. So we've got a variegated one here, so same colour, different tones, so just dark pink and light pink and you can see how sort of stripy this is. You start it at the top and you work in rows. So it's come to the dark pink and I think I've changed colour here. And I haven't done that thing that I've been telling you to do of to start where you finished. I'm just coming with a line. It's got a little stripe across here. So that's quite interesting to show what happens if you don't do that. But you can get interesting effects with that as well. So if I wanted to reverse what I did, I would need to start with the dark pink again and go back the other way. And then if we jump over to this one, you can see the other colour in this one. So this is a multicolour one now and it's got all these different colours. And that does something really interesting. It's got little stripes, but the colours are still nice and balanced within each other. So again, no control over that one, but the, the change of stitch and the type of stitch of technique you do will change how it looks. So really, really pretty. So it works really beautifully in the needle less. What I haven't mentioned yet, which was a bit remiss of me, is silk ribbons. We didn't look at silk ribbons in that. Um, these are very beautiful in variegated colours. I've got a couple here that we've just got in the shop. So we've got a green variegated one, quite subtle, this one, which is really great for leaves. You don't want any stripy leaves particularly in that instance I don't think and then I've got a yellow and an orange as well and a little bit of sort of um, peachy colour where they blend into each other so ribbons are really beautiful in variegated colours and I've got a couple of pieces here that I can just show you and ribbon rose is definitely the best thing to do in variegated I've done these quite a little quite a lot recently and you can just see them here and how it's sort of purple inside and it changes as it goes round, just gives really beautiful variegated effects here. And if you did the leaves in the green as well, you would get that effect too. And again here, 
little tiny ones here and I've coloured some of these as well but just the change in the colours of threads there work really well in the ribbon embroidery. I want to show you this one now just to talk about when maybe not to use them. So this is a little cross stitch design that we did and I have not used it in this project. I've actually decided where the colours go and change the colours. So there's quite a few colours going on in here. There's a dark pink, a medium and a light pink. And I've changed the thread throughout so that this is all symmetrical and it looks nice and I've controlled where those colours go. But looking at it now, I think a variegated thread in this would have been lovely. So to go around the edge of these flowers in a pink colour with that little bit of variation in it would have worked really nicely. So again, it's about that control. And because this is a symmetrical piece, I kind of wanted it to look symmetrical <laughs> that's what it's meant to be the stitching is symmetrical it's the same both sides so I've chosen the colors so I can control that obviously if you did use one of these you wouldn't have the control this one might not look like this one but I do think this is a design where this could have worked quite nicely so it's back to control if you want to choose where to put them don't use the variegated threads if you want a little bit of a surprise and just to let it be a bit more organic use the variegated now these are a lot of fun. This is a bit of needlepoint, a bit of canvas work here. And I've used this Madeira one, this beautiful one with the yellow and the pink and the orange, just to show you what it looks like on canvas now. So I've done the little flowers. This is a tiny little knot garden in there. And even the little fishes have been done in this. So I've just stitched this in tent stitch and the colours have come out wherever the colours have come out. And I've got a nice little selection of little goldfish in there changing colour and the flowers as well. So the pink ones are a single colour. These are the um, variegated colour and you just get this really beautiful effect so sometimes they just they really work really really well they just add that extra bit of dimension to it so it worked really well on that one and again see that colours are slightly different colours a bit paler but the rough sort of same colour ways in here to do this little knot garden and do these little flower beds so I don't have to change colour for every flower I do I can use this variegated and I get this beautiful coloured little um, patch of flowers now again, we just want to go back to maybe when not to use it. We talked about shading and the silk shading. So what about shading on canvas? So this is a little garden I garden urn I made many years ago for my lovely ladies in Portland. Hello to you if you're watching any of you. We did this project on canvas and I wanted to show them how to do some shading really. And you can see that here in the urn. So it's dark on the edge and we've got lighter here. There's a lot of control about where the stitches go. If I chose a colour to do that in it would not look like that it would look really patchy it'd be beautiful colors but it wouldn't have the shading on it and i want to mention now on both of these pieces get to this one a second is these leaves here now the color is varying in the leaves but that is not a variegated thread so if you don't have a variegated thread but you maybe want to try this technique you think how does this work what you can do is you can mix your colors in the needle you can get two different greens you can put them in the needle together you won't get that change of color along the length of the thread but you'll get the change throughout and that's how these are done so here is a tent stitch for these flat ones here and this is a woven pico stitch and you can see that you have got a variation in the colour and I don't get that stripiness um, or the really sudden changes of colour effect. So if you still want to have a go at changing the colours and maybe you haven't got a, a nice selection of, of variegated threads, you can still have a go at it by making your own. And obviously you could add different colours in your thread. You could do yellows and oranges and pinks, which go really nicely together. So just wanted to point that out and show you those two things on there. And then again on here. So this was my apprenticeship piece I did for the canvas work technique. And I have done that on here. And we did a lot of mixing in, in the needle. We didn't use any variegated threads. And again, I look back and think, why didn't I? Why didn't I do that? But we mixed them in the needle up and still managed to do a bit of shading in them. So this blue here is mixed. That might actually be a tiny bit of variegated. I'm thinking that might be that one now I look at it looks very similar doesn't it but I know this here is mixed in the needle and these colors are all mixed and you can see when the change of stitch how it changes in color the bigger the stitch you get that more um, obvious change of color not surprisingly and all down here as well these are all mixed as well so there was an awful lot of mixing in the needle but just to show you how you can create those mixed effects without having the actual variegated threads just by doing that mixing in the needle a bit harder to control that but you can be fun to have a play with 
And the last technique I want to show you is one of my favourites at the moment, and this is where variegated threads really come into their own, and that is some slow stitching. So slow stitching is a mindful embroidery technique. It's about how the um, threads and the fabrics feel in your fingers, not worrying about planning and is it right or is it wrong, and trying to get it to do this thing in particular. You just go with the flow, you enjoy the process of it, and this is where the, these threads really come into their own. So let's show you the little hearts first. So I've stitched just around this pattern. So this pale colour here was already on the fabric. This was some um, blinds material I used for the blinds and blinds. Uh, and I stitched around between it using this variegated thread. So it's gone pink and blue and green. And that's just come out as so little cross stitches there. And then I also did the cross stitches on this one and around this shape. And then I picked that pink colour just to make the hanging with. And then I've sewn the hanging with the thread as well. So again, you can pick, use a, one of these threads to pick your colour scheme pick the other colours to go with it and you've got that really nice colour palette. Um, show you this little one here, little card holder here and I've done that same here and I think this one is this thread here that we've looked at before. I've just oops, and I've just done my running stitch all the way around with this, I've gone all the way around the edge with it, all the way around and all the way around here and you just get those colour changes without having to change your thread and it just comes out really beautifully on the slow stitch and gone around this edge as well you can see it changing around here and then this is a little phone case that I made this is our 20 things to make with your slow stitching video if you're interested in seeing a bit more of these um, and again so a lot of colours and a lot of pattern going on here so some of them are plain that's just one um, colour of thread and then I've done the variegated here so the little spirals are really beautiful and variegated got one on the back as well there's just a plain one and there's that nice sort of green bluey one as well just changing as you go around the spiral adding an extra little bit of dimension so really really good for slow stitching projects so I hope that's demystified variegated threads a little bit at least and you can understand a little bit more now about what they are and how you can use them, when to use them and maybe when not to use them and just looking at those pieces has inspired you to bring them into your projects as well. If you're interested to know more about threads, you can check out this playlist over here. We go over lots of different kinds and try some out. So do check out that if you're learning about embroidery threads. If you've enjoyed this video, a thumbs up is always appreciated. And I will see you all next time.